Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Single Malt Review. Thank you for joining us again. Karl Marx apparently once said that socialism is historically inevitable. Now the thing about Karl Marx is he didn't review whiskey. If he had reviewed whiskey, he would have known that it is in fact Laphroaig, which is historically inevitable, for we are now today reviewing a Laphroaig. Mm. Taking us a wee while, given how ubiquitous a whiskey mm. it is, but we've gotten there in the end. So where did this one come from? This is a 14-year-old Laphroaig from the old malt cask. It was distilled in 98, bottled in 2012, and of course 50% ABV, for it is an old malt cask. It's from a hogshead, one of only 311 bottles. So that's a pretty good number to come out of a hogshead, so that must have been quite a nice, tightly built one. Uh, but as for the wood involved, well, that's a little bit mysterious because it's really pretty pale. So I'm going to say refill hogshead, and um, whether or not I can make a more definitive call as we taste it, we will just have it. It's indeed see. a refill, but uh, no, no further clues mm. on the label. Yes, oh, we'll just have to see. So mm. the Freud, um, ubiquitous, and you probably say the dominant distillery on Isla, at least in terms of their uh, brand exposure. They must have an entire office just for the people that put out their um, emails. Um, if my uh, sort of promotional inbox is anything to uh, anything to market against, they certainly have a pretty hard working team there getting it out. And I think they're really, really very popular in America as well, which probably goes a long way. But anyway, let's see if this one's any good. This one's particularly a favourite of my wife. The Freud is not always my pick. Mm, no, so it's, we'll not, um, it's not my Isle of Distillery of choice either. I'm more of an Ard Big man, if not um, a bit of Bunhaven or Col mm. Ila, uh, which we should really do a few more of. Yeah, I'm more but as anyway. to a uh, Brook Laddie or a Kilomen. Mm. Lots so to choose see. from, really. The Freud have their, always their distinct, uh, particular version of highly peated whiskey, a particular flavour somehow. Mm, I can always see Laphroaig coming. What Laphroaig sort of brings in more um, sort of concentration than the other either distilleries is first off that real iodine hit which is you could say the tell for almost all Isla distilleries maybe um, with the exclusion of Brook Laddie who do a slightly softer kind of a thing sometimes. But it's iodine, but secondarily and more uniquely to Laphroaig, there is just the sensation and the smell of ashes to me. You smell it, and it's almost as if it turns to ashes in my mouth or in my nose in this case. It's a very, very drying thing. Even if it begins sweet, Laphroaig always ends up dry. There's only one Laphroaig I've tasted in my lifetime, which I will try and remember to bring up later on. Um, that has started sweet and finished sweet. It's a very, very drying whiskey. And yeah, all those characters are there in abundance in the nose. Mm. That distinctly antiseptic iodine smelling uh, peat, a little bit of brine. Mm. I'd say really quite archetypical for Lefroy, but the bottle has some. I always think the tasting notes on old malt casks are a little bit out there, but I'll read them anyway. The nose opens sweetly and then has an oceanic catch, if you want to um, imagine what that's supposed to be, with peat and tar. So that's sort of a very, very broad description of Laphroaig there. You can see the old malt cask bottles there. They have fairly, fairly uh, visible, if not um, comprehensible, tasting notes. I think I'm more of a fan of the um, Cadenhead's tags, but anyway, let's see what's on the palette at full strength. Oh, no, that's not too strong. Mm. There's one thing you can say for old malt cask, even though I think they're having a bit of a, um, having a, bit of a go, still going with this 50 anniversary, 50% thing, because it means they get to save just a little bit of whiskey on every cask and push out a few more bottles by stealing a few percent off the end. But it also hamstrung them a little bit, which means um, the occasional cask, which has gone below 50, they can't release although they do sometimes. I've seen a few sneaky old malt casks under 50%. They just hope nobody will notice, but I'll forgive them that. But it does mean that you're, unusual, you're unlikely to get an old malt cask, which will absolutely blow your head off with alcohol because they are obviously never going to be over 50%. So This one instead threatens mm. to blow my head off with peat. It's not 
phenomenally peated, like an Ardbeg, but it's that strong Lefroy iodine peat, and that flavor is drowning mm. out pretty much anything else. It's definitely up there. Um, with peated whiskies like this, they almost always reward a bit of water because it's sometimes, oftentimes, the only way of getting through that, just that blast of peat and seeing what's on the other side. It's difficult to see the forest for the, um, for the burning inflammatory trees sometimes. With with that water like now, the nose is softened, there's a little more gentle brine, there's also some bitumen, some road tar. Mm, yes indeed. That nose, now that it's opened up and I can see really what's there, that's, that's downright filthy now, which um, Lefroy and many other island distilleries would be perfectly at home to being called filthy whiskies. Um, filthy, dirty, dockyard, bottom of a fishing vessel, they, will, they, they love those sorts of characters there. All about the things that ought to be horrible. And yeah, the sort of tarry rope, just a tar straight on the road on a hot day, as Dave says, and a little bit of um, sort of salted fish as well. If you've had some, um, you know, kippered herrings or something like that. The flavour has become, it's Ooh. slightly acrid now. It's making me think of, say, like a, a wet rope hanging on a wharf. Um, salty and, and sort of fibrous, a little bit dank. Mm. It's very, it's an industrial flavour, mm. you'd have to call it that, which is exactly what it goes for. I'm trying to taste anything beyond that peat and that iodine and that salt, but all I can think of is a slightly sour strawberry character. Mm. I've only had sour strawberry once, that was in a, a um, soured strawberry ale from Almanac, the California craft microbrewer. Mm. That's really stretching for something that's not just peat. There is, I think, there's a tiny bit of fruit in here, but I'm not even game to say exactly what I'm tasting. This is, first and foremost, an Isla whiskey, and more than that, it's a Lefroy whiskey. It's so, so archetypical of that distillery, and boy, oh boy, it's not holding a lot back. There is little subtlety in... Um, typical Lefroy like this. It's not a subtle whiskey. That's not its that's not its bag. It's not really what any Isla whiskies do. Although if you encounter the occasional unpeated um, Bunahaban or Brook Lady then prepare to be surprised. But those are pretty rare. I hope to find one and display it at some point. But anyway, this one, yeah, pretty pretty raw flavours mm. here. It's very, very um goodness. I'd love it if I called it elemental and I might just. It's a very elemental whiskey. Things here are very basic very distinguishable, very harsh uh, very down to earth which if that's what you're into then it's a really good thing. I'm not sure it's exactly what I'm into I just need a little bit more subtlety in my drams but I can absolutely um, applaud it for um, doing what it does best mm. So Oh no, I should mention, the um, whiskey that I have tasted uh, just yesterday, in fact I was at a, um, goodness what was it called, it was a Lefroy versus Ard Big tasting, and there's a recipe for concoction right there, but um, they did have, which I haven't encountered before, and I'm now really sad that I didn't go and hunt bottles down, they had Lefroig's 200th anniversary bottling. Not to say that it was 200 years old, it was allegedly 15 years old, but I suspect this was um, the poster boy for top dressing because it was one of the, it was first the most lightly peated Lefroy I had ever tasted, and secondly it was the best. By an enormous margin, it was absolutely beautiful whiskey, it was the sort of the fruitiest, most tropical thing imaginable, so we are certainly not to say that Lefroy can't produce uh, softer, sweeter, fruitier whiskey. It's just not their style. So somewhere in the depths of their warehouses is probably some amazingly delicious fruity sherry casks, but uh, who knows. And as for casks, I still can't really make a educated call on what this is. The flavour of the spirit is so dominating that um, whether the cask is a sherry or a bourbon, I just could not say with any any degree of confidence, especially since it's a refill. Um, it's The influence is just so subtle, so we'll, we'll call it a Freud and we'll leave it at that. Mm. But what level of Lefroig? Mm. I'm still thinking, what do you think? It's extremely Lefroig. I mean, you could find yourself a hermit monk who took a vow of silence before he's old enough to talk, has lived away from civilization for 40 years, he's never touched a drop of alcohol, he's never 
been on the internet, never experienced booze, hand him a glass of this, and he would say, holy crap, that's a Lefroy. Mm. Pretty much. What with scores are you thinking? In scores, though, I've got to be... It's a, it's a very good Lefroy. It is the quintessence of Lefroy. The problem is, I don't like the quintessence of Lefroy. I like to taste things that aren't just tar and peat and salt and, and more peat and some peat. So I'll have to rate this one a 68. It's a good whiskey, it's a good Lefroy. If you like those things, you like lots of peat, then it is glorious, it's a whiskey for you. It is sadly just not the whiskey for me, so I'll give it a score that acknowledges the quality, but also acknowledges that I just don't enjoy it all that much. Mm. I'm rating it much along the same lines. I'll give it a 71, um, because I can, I really appreciate the, the purity of what it does, the, the sheer force of character that it brings, but I'm in exactly the same boat as you in that that's just not the character that I'm really really truly looking for so um, it's a whiskey that I respect it isn't a whiskey that I love so that's mm. um, it's just so single minded it's like it's got a will of its own that mm. will is just the word Lefroy written in all caps repeating yeah. it's, it's strong stuff arguably very strong stuff but um, hey if you're a Lefroy um, lover and goodness knows there's a lot of them out there in the world um it's a hell of a whiskey. Sadly, hell of an unavailable now because this bottle was probably bought easily two years ago at this yes, point. Yes, it was bottled three years back. But the thing about a consistent whiskey is that when it comes back around, it will probably be exactly the same, mm. if not very, very similar. And Lefroy is not shy about sending its casks out to mm. be uh, bottled independently. So uh, I'd say on any day of the week, you can probably, um, as long as you can find independent bottles, which is much more difficult, you'll be able to find a Lefroy. Um, I don't think I've ever been to our local independent bottle shelf and seen it without one. Ever. So there you go. Nothing if not available. Um, as for the standard range, it's fairly extensive these days. Now, I don't really like the 10 year old myself, I just think that's slightly, it's slightly thin on depth. Um, it's certainly not thin on, um, well, you know, it's not thin on Lefroy character, but I just think it's a bit it's a bit shallow in terms of what it brings. I think Lefroy comes good when um, you get up into the quarter cask, which is their no age statement. That's had an extra fairly fresh bourbon treatment on top of it, and um, if you can if you can be willing to shout out for it, I think the Lefroy 18 years old is a phenomenal whiskey. And at that age, the peat is beginning to burn off, and we're beginning to see the um, see the core of the whiskey for what it is minus all that smoke and that's really quite a, a beautiful thing to see when that starts to happen but like I said it's a bit of an investment and very hard to find as well um, they also do a 21 and that you're probably looking at um, you know mortgaging the house territory once you get up there but you know who knows some people have more money than others but anyway um, we will just have to leave it there and um, find something else interesting. This has been the Single Mont Review. I hope it was um, informative as ever. We will go back into the cabinet and find something um, maybe a bit less Lefroy for you next time. But at least we can say we've done one. We've done the stamp of whiskey. We've done the Lefroy. Slanger. <laughs>